and welcome to another episode of Uber. In today's episode, we are going to talk about Lambda layers, finally. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineering practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday and sometimes on Fridays. So let's get started. <laughs> So let's get started with what is Lambda Layers. So Lambda Layers is one of the latest releases from Rainbend from the serverless offering. And in my opinion, it's pretty a cool launch from Rainbend. I made my video on my top Rainbend launches, so you can find it in the card here. A layer is basically a zip file that contains libraries that it can be a custom runtime or dependencies. So basically with layers, you can uh, do cobol serverless cobol, Ruby, or you can do, I don't know, Rust or other languages that are not supported by the Lambda platform. But we are not focusing on that in this video, we are focusing on the dependencies. With layers, you can use libraries in your function without needing to include them in the deployment package. And that's what we are going to do. Before layers, you will have these four functions that they will share the library A and B. And you will pack each of these functions in an independent individual package. So basically you will be having library A and library B all around the place. And it didn't matter that the dependencies were exactly the same. So if you want to make sure that all the functions were using the exact same version of these dependencies, then you will need to check that manually or have some kind of magic as a lot of projects had. Or and also if you wanted to update all these libraries to the same version, then you will need to go one by one and make sure that it happened. Also, the function package was very big because it contained all the dependencies. So deploying these functions was a little bit uh, heavy. Now with layers, the libraries are extracted outside of the function and they are deployed in a different time than the function. They have a different life cycle. Then in each of the functions, you make a reference to the layer containing that dependencies. And then all the functions that are using the same layer will be uh, linked to the same layer. So basically everybody will be using exactly the same versions. And the function packages will be small because then you don't have the libraries in the dependencies. So then deployment should be fast. And if you want to update the library, then you just update the layer and then you change the reference that each of the function is doing to the new version because layers support versions. So during deployment, the Lambda service will pack the function with all the layers and its reference in the order that they are referenced in the definition of the function. The size of all these should not exceed the 250 megabytes after everything is unzipped. So be careful with your libraries. Now everything is distributed around, so it's hard to make sure that the package size is good. So it's the same limitation than before layers. Lambda has not become bigger, but now you have the challenge that everything is kind of decoupled. So one more distributed system problem. Also remember that if the libraries and the business logic is too big, you will still have issues with your call starts in your function. So basically after the code is deployed, when it's running, the layers are extracted to the op directory in the function environment. So each runtime looks for the libraries in a different location under uh, by class op. So the structure of your layers needs to be so that the function code can access the libraries without doing some much extra code. Uh, now serverless framework, the new version 1.0, 0.34 and higher supports layers. So this is great thing because we will use serverless framework for this example. In this tutorial, we are going to grab an existing project and migrate it to have layers. You can see the benefits and we will add two layers to see how they behave. So let's go to the code. So we are going to start with this project. This is the MIDI parameter is something we have done many videos ago and we will just clone that into our computer all the links of the code are in the description below. We just clone that with a different name and we call it layers tests or something like that. Very clever as always. Then we go into that and we open it with Visual Studio Code that I switch it from Atom and it's pretty cool. So now we just rename in the serverless YAML the service name. And then we can see our serverless YAML. It has one Lambda that is hello and an API gateway with the method get and the path hello that is basically fetching one parameter from the parameter store. And we have given permission to that. We are using MIDI, this kind of library. And that's the library we are going to extract to a layer. But first we are going to start by showing you how big the package is. So let's start by installing all the dependencies. 
in our project. So we start uh, serverless pseudo parameters and then we install the MIDI. And those are our dependencies in this project. Now it's in our node module and basically that's all we need. And now we can basically package this. So if we run SLS package, we will see the size of the package that is going to be deployed. So we go to serverless dot serverless folder, we show it in the finder and we can see the size of the layer test, that's the package. And basically it's almost one megabyte. Cool. So now we can start adding the layers and see if there is some change on this. So for that we will remove the serverless folder and the node modules folder. So we start from clean and we are going to modify a little bit the serverless YAML. First, we are going to create a new folder where the layer dependencies will be. So there we have the MIDI layer and there we will install the MIDI dependency, the library. So we just install the library there. So instead of going to the known modules in the root directory, it goes to the known modules inside this library. And because MIDI needs the AWS SDK to work and the layers don't have it, then we need to install this library. If not, then this code will not work. So now we have the two dependencies inside this no node modules inside the mid layer. Now we can modify the serverless YAML. We don't need to change the handler JS whatsoever yet. The first thing we are going to do is to exclude from the packaging the MIDI layer folder that we have created, so we don't add it there. The next thing we are going to do is to add an environmental variable called node path. So we are changing a little bit the node path. So whenever now the handler JS is looking for for the node modules, it will look for also the ones in the opt node modules. So that's a trick for getting the libraries delivered to the right place. And the next thing we are going to do is add this property layers. And this is something from serverless framework and then we define all the layers so we have the midi dependencies node module that is the one i have created the path is the midi layers and the description in my case is midi dependencies so now we are defining our layers and now we will reference this layer that we just defined in our function to use that layer and that's almost all of it in the case we want to have a different serverless framework project for the lambdas and for the layers, then the layers we will define in another serverless YAML, in the one that belongs to the uh, layer, and then we will refer in the function with the ARN of that layer that we will get when we deploy that layers. Now we need to install in the root of our project the pseudo parameter we are not putting that in a dependency and now we have everything we need and we can try and we can see the package size so we run the SLS package and then we check the package size now if you open the serverless folder we can see that there are two zips one for the layers one for the code the one for the layers is almost eight megabytes because we have the AWS SDK there but the other one is super small, it's like 7k. That's our function, so our function code now doesn't have any dependencies. And now we can deploy and we can see what is going on. So it's creating the CloudFormation stack. So now the layers and the functions are living inside the same CloudFormation stack. And that's kind of not wise. We will see later that why is not a good idea. But I started doing this video when I was learning about layers. So I was like, mm, I will just mention this later, but you should not put the two things in the same serverless YAML. Then we can see that uh, it's uploading two artifacts, one that is quite small, that is the seven uh, kilobytes, and one that is uh, 7.5 megabytes. One is the layer, one is the function. And then we will continue the, the stack creation and then we will see the service information. So I can speed this a little bit up. So when we get to the service information, we will see all the information with always. And then at the bottom, we will see layers and we will see the ARN for that layer and the version at the end. That last number five is the version because I've been playing with the same dependence, uh, the same MIDI uh, file for a while. So now we can go put Postman and we can test this. In order to test this, you need to have one parameter in your 
in your parameter store. If you don't know how to do that, I leave you the link of this tutorial so you can go and check it out. But this is not relevant for this tutorial. So now we will go to the functions in our Lambda console, to the functions console and open this Lambda. And we will see that there is this layers thing and it has a one. If we click there, we will see the layer name and then we will see the version and the merge order. Now we have only one. So then there is only one layer. And there we can see the layer, we can up download the package and we can uh, create a new version. So now we want to create a new layer. So we will create another folder, we call it layer two, very original name. And there we will install, I don't know, some library like this UUID so we can generate random uh, like numbers. And that's very random, but well, we just add it in the response of the body. And then we just basically install that library inside of our layer two. This is the same as it with, with the MIDI. And now we can go to the serverless YAML and there we can create, uh, we can add another thing to exclude in our packaging, this layer two, we don't want it in our package. And then we will add another layer called layer two node modules, I don't know. And we put the path, layer two layer, in the description, whatever you like, more dependencies. But I want to show here how you can stack dependencies and basically it's as easy as putting another reference. And this will be in the order that they will be uh, built. So first the MIDI dependencies and then the YDD. Uh, so first the MIDI and then layer two. So that's as simple as that. If we package, then we will see three packages one for the function, one for each layer. So if we go to our serverless folder, now we will see the three layers and they have different sizes, but our main function is still very small. And now we can deploy and you will see now that we are uploading free artifacts to AWS. So I will speed this up a little bit until we get the service information. And now in the service information, you can see that there's two layers, the MIDI dependencies and the layer two node modules, and both have this ARN and a version. That's cool. So we go back and we can see that there are two, two layers there. And then we can also go to the function and we can see that there are two layers there as well. So now let's do an experiment. I will modify the function, but I will not modify the dependencies. So what will happen now, if I deploy, the function should change, but not the dependencies. And this is not the case because the way that we have created this project, everything will be modified and the uh, dependencies will get a new version. So this is not the right way to architect your uh, projects with layers. You should put layers in a different project than the functions and then make reference to them. So that's kind of a pity or then you can just deploy the functions, but that if you just do SLS deploy and the function, you will only deploy the code of the function, but you will not be deploying whatever is in the stack in the serverless YAML. So if you do any change, then you will update the layers. So I think the best approach is to have separate projects, one for each layer, and then have a project where all your functions are. So that's kind of the, the cleanest way. So then you are not updating the versions every time you, uh, are updating your code because now we will see before we have four and six the versions and now when we finish this deployment I will speed it up and we will see that we have four and six and now I will refresh this page and we can see that we have the new versions are seven and five so we don't want to update our layer version all the time because that makes a mess so to conclude a couple of best practices I learned have layers that do one thing only that they're small. So then you don't have this problem of having two big dependencies that then don't fit when you have five of them. They should be small because you will have five layers and the Lambda code and they should be under 250 megabytes. So that's kind of a limitation and then put different CloudFormation stack for each of the layers and from your project. So then you keep this isolation and you don't have the version updating all the time. 
So this was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up and don't forget to put in the comments which are the releases that you want to see come tutorials as soon as possible and also let me know what are your favorite launches from Rainbend. So around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch and I see you in the next episode of Wubar. Ciao, ciao!